Welcome back. This is take two of the video. The first one was too long, but I, I just want to say that one of the things that I struggle with sometimes, and maybe you do too, is getting into what you can clearly recognize during the game as a wand position, the position in which you have a significant advantage. You've cleared out their material, you have more space, you have more active pieces, whatever the case may be. But then sometimes the next move isn't obvious. And that happened to me in this game. So I, I want to take it through it as fast as I can. Reason for take two of the video. Um, I opened trying to play the London system. I wasn't sure what E6 was for, but I went ahead and I realized they did E6 to prepare D5, uh, D5 which didn't need preparing because I'm not hitting the D5 square. But anyway, I played the London Bishop out and they put the Knight on C6. Uh, if you don't remember, I've been told a lot, maybe you have too, that in D-pawn pos positions or Queen-pawn positions, you want your knight to be behind the C-pawn, at least most of the time. There are exceptions. So I thought I recognized that immediately is not the best move because now this pawn's blocked in. It can't help this pawn. It can't challenge this one. So I uh, I remember in, from the past that I'm supposed to play C4 there, and it turned out to be correct. And then my opponent played that. I don't know what their uh, plan was other than a one-move attack against the bishop. And I, I'm usually not afraid of one-move attacks. I mean, they are forcing to, to the extent that I either have to get this piece out of the way or, or defend it. But that seemed like pretty weak sauce to me. And uh, now they've blocked the normal development square for their knight. So... And of course their e6 pawn has to block their normal development of the light squared bishop. So I wasn't sure what that was about. I briefly considered going ahead with, I mean, part of the London is bringing up the e3 pawn and that would have defended this. But I also saw that the queen move uh, took out this defender of that pawn, of the c pawn, which should have been moved up already. So I just took it. Um, and then they played their second mistake in a row, which this one's actually counted as a blunder. I think they just miscounted that they have two defenders on this uh, pawn, but I have three. Maybe they forgot that pieces can move backwards temporarily. I don't know. And I briefly considered coming back to take it with the bishop, but then the knight would take, and then I would take, and I would be up a pawn... But now their bishop's free, and I, I don't know. So I just thought if I took with the pawn, I would threaten the queen, and they moved the queen. And then I was like, wait, I can just take take this other pawn. So I did that. Now I'm up three pawns on move seven. And they went to threaten my bishop, which seemed silly because I could come here to uh, you know force this trade. Or, wait, I can just move this pawn forward and protect it. Okay, so now this is the position that I was talking about at the beginning of the video when I said winning a wand position. At this point, I'm already aware that after eight moves, I have a significant advantage. They're missing three center pawns. They're, you know, C, D, and E pawns completely. I have a minor piece on the seventh rank protected with two center pawns, lots of space, the back one is defended by the knight. See how these knight arrows are better on Lee Chess? Yeah, chess.com's arrows go up and over, and that's just confusing. These arrows are so much better. If you know someone that works at chess.com, or if you work at chess.com, start pushing for that, man. These arrows are so much better. But anyway, sorry, I distract myself. But now what do I do? I have a wand position. I, I don't know if it's plus four or plus five, and the computer says plus almost plus nine. But what's next? Fortunately, I think I made the right decision is uh, I noticed, you know, I still have pieces undeveloped. I have rooks that are trapped. So depending on what my opponent does, my plan is to is to move my e-pawn up so I can get this bishop out somewhere and then get this knight out. And I think that's probably the best idea when you have a definitely won position or a winning position is just to stick with your normal principles. Try to, you know, protect your pieces, control center squares and develop. Um, I had a little fun following this line through. The computer's second suggestion is just to put their light dark squared bishop here on e7, hoping I will take so they can take this bishop and, and then that pawn. 
But anyway, they decided to try to get rid of this back pawn, and I thought, I really can't hang on to it. Um, because if they take, and I take, and they take, that's not going to work out that well. So I just decided to take the F pawn, which makes this one more vulnerable. Uh, but that's okay. Now I'm four pawns ahead. Okay, three pawns ahead. I did my plan. I want to get this bishop out somewhere. That turned out to be their best move. It adds another uh, attacker to my rear pawn there. I did my uh, plan. It says it was better to go here, but this is fine. I'm preparing castling. Now, did you notice the engine says my best move is knight to e5? Right here, instead of getting this bishop out. Stockfish followed a line, and I followed it. I'm not going to do it on the video, but it's about 21 moves where I end up basically winning by force, even if black makes the best moves. But I'm never going to find about half of those moves, like this one, the first one, because it looks like it just hangs a knight. It turns out white wouldn't take it. White would move their queen here if they were as smart as stockfish. But anyway, there's a long series of things. But I thought, well, you know what? What? Why wouldn't they take the knight? And this is why. If you put the knight here, it's just a diversion. If they take the knight, I go check here, right? If they block with the pawn, I get the knight back. So it wasn't losing a knight. So they won't block with the pawn. If they have a second to think about it, they'll block with the knight, right? But now the knight's not here anymore because it went here and and then over there. So what can go over there? This bishop. It's pinning the queen to their king, and it's protected across the board with this queen that's pinning this knight. Right? You cut all that? And I'm supposed to see that from right here. So there, there, check, block the check, put the bishop out here, skewering through here because that knight's not there anymore that knight's over here now and the bishop is protected by my queen which is over here now and yes that looks like some sort of weird egyptian hieroglyphics but that's what i was supposed to find right here which is a little uh, that's advanced for me i mean now that i've seen it i followed that line out i that's pretty impressive because i have to be able to envision not just uh losing my knight but I then I have to envision this knight isn't here anymore so the queen is free to check and that this knight in the middle on e5 isn't guarded so it's threatened so they wouldn't block with the pawn they would block with the knight and then I have to remember that that knight's not over there anymore so I can do this knowing that it's protected across here by the queen I'm not going to see that I developed my bishop as I said as my plan was I didn't want to go too far because I thought hey let's keep I'm in a winning position I don't want to do anything too extravagant and they finally got rid of my uh, uh, center dominance there um, and I played the best move here which again was according to my plan just solid developing opening principles getting the pieces out preparing to castle they castled here and it says my best move is check. All I wanted to do was move my queen here so I could castle. Because I knew if I castled, I would have a rook here pinning this bishop to the queen. But then I saw instead of just here, I could go ahead and go out because the f-pawn's gone. Remember when they gave it up to get rid of my uh, my e-pawn? Well, my second e-pawn. So I just went ahead and went over here, check, and now they have to do something. Then I can castle, well, not there can castle and I'll have a rook pin with a pin here for some reason that's not nearly as good as checking here and I really don't know the difference I tried to find out the difference they moved out of the check and now look at the top suggestion it's just moving the rook over it's not castling again I couldn't figure out why that's better than my plan of castling which puts a rook right where they stockfish wanted a rook here but now my advantage is only two and I'm not sure why. So you can see that just my idea of following normal opening developing principles wasn't perfect, at least according to Stockfish. But I'm not playing against Stockfish, as I've mentioned in some of my earliest videos. I'm playing against a person. And to a person, this looks pretty dangerous. They know they need to move their queen. Um, actually, some people I've played wouldn't have noticed that. Um, but my opponent did notice it. They didn't think to stay here and continue protecting the bishop they saw that now that I've castled, 
this pawn isn't guarded anymore. So they went over there, aiming for this gar unguarded pawn. And I thought, well, what's more important, a pawn or the bishop they just left there? So I went and took the bishop. Um, so now I'm up a piece, a full piece, and still up two pawns. But they're about to come in here, and this is where things got bad. There's a really simple answer here, according to Stockfish. Just put your queen here to protect this bishop, which is already guarded. I mean, the the bishop also protects... I mean, sorry. Moving the queen down would also guard the rook, which is guarding this pawn. But nothing is guarding that pawn. That's why the second engine suggestion is to move the rook to f1. Now that one actually makes sense to me in hindsight. It would be guarded by the bishop, which is guarded by the knight, and the rook would be guarding the pawn, which guards this pawn, and the bishop's guarding this knight. So everything's protected. Well, I mean, except for this guy, but yeah, you know, he's just running around out there having fun. Um, but I didn't quite see that. I just saw that, you know, my uh, my rook is hanging. And I thought, if I move it over, it's guarded by the knight, and it's pointing right here. I knew they would get the queen out of the way. I wasn't trying to attack the queen. I figured the queen would move out of the way. Didn't matter where, but then I'm pointing at this pawn. And I thought then, if I could somehow get this knight out of the way, I could get my queen over here, and my queen would also be pointing at that pawn. So that's why I did this, which wasn't as good as the other moves, but it's still not horrible. But it leaves this undefended, which rook f1 would not have done. So they took that. And now you see, right now this bishop is guarded, which and it's guarding this, which is guarding this, and this. So I should probably just leave all of this alone, right? It wants me to. It wants me to put knight on d1. That's what Stockfish wants. And if, if I do that, it says they'll just go ahead and take my bishop. That's my price, I guess, for taking this bishop. I, I never would have seen this. But I decided to give up the bishop anyway and go ahead with my plan of getting the queen over here to line up with the g1 pawn, which is a checkmate, right? If they don't stop it soon enough. So I did that which is a blunder because I mean it hangs this but it's weird because they wanted me I don't know why because remember Stockfish wanted me to go here and hang the bishop anyway but somehow giving the bishop away this way is not great but they didn't take the bishop and I'm not supposed to take the rook I'm supposed to go over here and let them have the bishop again <laughs> but I took the rook and they took mine that's why I was supposed to move the rook over. But now we're dead even. And all I have to do is block with the queen. But I blocked with the bishop. Now, have you ever heard the saying, put pressure on the pinned piece? PP on the PP? This bishop is pinned. If they will bring their bishop here, it's putting pressure on the pinned piece. And that bishop move would free this rook. Have you noticed these pieces haven't moved the entire game? I was starting to notice that too. I was also noticing now that their F rook is gone. I have a nice juicy checkmate right here if I can get rid of that knight. That's what I started noticing about here. Um, I don't know if my opponent noticed that coming too. Because their next move was this. Giving themselves an out. And now I'm supposed to go down here for an empty threat on this rook. I'm pretty sure if I did that, they would just move the rook over. Although Stockfish says if I did that, they would just take this pawn. Oh, nice. I don't know if my opponent would have seen that. I think if I moved here, they would have just moved the rook over. But I saw a way to get rid of this knight so I can check and when the king comes up here I can check this way right so I did that that's a huge blunder because now 
it says they can uh, go here. I don't know what I don't know what's great about that, but that's what Stockfish uh, says is one good move. Another good move is here. But instead, they saw that their knight was under threat, and I thought they were just going to take mine. But they, I guess they thought they've heard of danger levels, so they went to threaten my queen. But now my plan is afoot. And this position I know how to win because there are obvious moves the whole way. That's check. They have to go there. Now I have a couple of choices to recheck. I can't use the bishop because it's still pinned. But I found that one, which turns out to be the best one. I thought about these two for several seconds before I found the best check. Because now, when it comes out, I can bring the rook out. They still haven't moved those two back rank pieces. This is why development is so important. All my pieces got out and got into the action and had fun. Two of theirs never moved in this game. Now, wait, let's go back. Wait, it says I have made in one right here. Oh, I missed it. I have made in one because the pawn guards this square. The rook cuts off all those. The queen would cut off all those. And this one. And the bishop guards that square this circle right here even though it's pinned I didn't see that but I saw this I really wanted them to try something like this so I could pick off their queen but instead they went there and that's mate so anyway I, I did win the one position um, but it was tough and I think one thing that saved me in the end I mean besides my opponent blundering but we, we our blunders turned out to be complex blunders with like the answer to it not immediate for most of them for most of uh, those blunders and mistakes on both our parts they only turned out to be that way if the opponent saw like a three or eight or in one case 20 move sequence but i developed all my pieces remember when i had the bishop and the two pawns over here and i didn't know what to do i i, I decided to just develop my pieces get my king to safety solid opening principles and my opponent did not do that I could not have checked where I checked when I checked right here if that bishop wasn't there if that bishop had moved any of those times that it could have I couldn't have done this check the only reason I could do that was because they never moved these two pieces so anyway Thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully you learned something. I think I learned something from this game. Uh, when you're in a wand position, try to stick with your principles. You can look for tactics if you have time. But for me, I, I'm just going to try to remind myself, just make sure my pieces are developed. Make sure my king is, is safe. Make sure the developed pieces can protect each other if possible. See you next time.